Family, we should be live. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up in the live chat as always. That way I know things are working. And it's wonderful to be together with you guys, to be together with the family of God tonight and fellowship and encourage one another. Uh, let me check the live chat here. All right. Thank you, guys. I see the hello, thumbs up. Awesome. Okay. Oh, you know what? I realize my microphone is not pointed in the right direction, too. There we go. You could probably hear me better now. Okay, cool. Is that loud and clear? Thumbs up if yes. Sorry about that. I had the microphone pointing at the back of the room. Okay, thank you, Shelby. Appreciate it. Okay, so listen, guys. Let's get right to it. Um, first off, I want to start off by saying uh, it might be a long time in between me making videos, and that is because I do not simply just make videos every week or have any kind of schedule. I really leave it up to the Lord to just put something on my heart. And until I feel like the Lord has put something in my heart, I just don't want to turn the camera on. Um, so I feel like the Lord has put two things on my heart, uh, two goals to accomplish with any video that I make. And that is number one, to encourage the body of Christ and to do that by pointing to Jesus Christ. And number two, to warn the lost in the unbelieving world and point them to Jesus Christ. And um, I simply make these videos for, for those reasons. And my channel is not monetized. I do not make any money off of these YouTube videos whatsoever. Um, these are just to, to be obedient to, to those two things that the Lord has put on my heart to do with any video. So if you'll recall, let's get right into it. If you'll recall last year, 2023, um, I did several videos on the 2023 SDG Summit that the UN held. And I talked about how the rallying cry of the world governments and particularly from the UN to put pressure on Israel and to divide its land was peace and security. That was the rallying cry. And it was, I talked about it and I, it was so obvious if you were paying attention and you were, you were watching those proceedings and watching what the UN was doing. And that particular phrase um, was said over and over and over again during those September 2023 SDG summit proceedings. And it was incredible to watch and it was incredible to see uh, you guys join me in the UN's live chat while they were doing it. We were in their live chat sharing the gospel and sharing Jesus and lifting the name of Jesus high um, in front of the nations. And that was real. I mean, literally, if you had gone to the UN summit live chat, you would have just seen the gospel being shared on their live chat while they were on there talking about peace and security. And, and trying to get Israel to divide its land and all these things. And at that time when I made those videos, um, I made a statement that I expected to see that rallying cry of peace and security to continue to ramp up to a fever pitch as time goes by and that it will specifically be pointed at Israel. And so you fast forward now from, you know, we had the October um, 7th attacks on Israel by Hamas and the subsequent declaration of war from Israel. And then you come to now and we, we saw yesterday, Sunday, April 14th here, we saw Israel get attacked by Iran. In fact, let me let me um, pull this news article up. I'm sure all of you are fully aware of this, but just want to document it here. So we saw 
Israel shooting down hundreds and hundreds of drones and missiles, which were sent from Iran and other places, it's Iran's proxies, to attack Israel. And so after seeing all of these things, which are just incredible to witness, now what do we see? We see Biden and the United States turning its back on our ally, Israel, which does not bode well for this nation. And we see the United Nations crying out for what? Peace and security. Specifically, peace and security. And I want to read this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 4. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, also translated peace and security, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, Christians, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. So this scripture, guys, is speaking of both the coming pre-tribulation rapture and the seven-year tribulation period, which is the day of the Lord that comes like a thief in the night. That's what it's talking about here in 1 Thessalonians 2 through 4. Notice it said, you know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. And it's talking about how it will come like tra as travail upon a woman with child. This is the tribulation period. It's going to come upon the world, the Bible says, completely unexpected. They are not going to see it coming. But, it says, the believer, when it's referring to the brethren, is not in darkness. And that day, that coming tribulation period, is not going to catch us off guard. Also, it says, speaking of the world, they won't escape. But we know scripture says we, the church, the body of Christ, will escape. And we will be taken out of this world because of the fact that we are covered by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and we cannot be here for the wrath of God during this day of the Lord because we are covered by the blood. And so we will be taken. We will escape prior to this coming tribulation period. And notice this, okay? This is the big one for tonight especially. What does it say is the hallmark phrase that the world will be saying at the time that the day of the Lord, the tribulation period, comes upon them like a thief, comes upon them unexpectedly. What will the world be saying? According to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 3, peace and security. It says, when they shall say, or while they are saying, peace and security. That is the hallmark phrase that scripture says the world will be speaking and saying when it's time for the rapture and the tribulation period. Folks, the Bible is the word of God. Only the word of God has declared what will happen in the end times from the very beginning. Scripture says in Isaiah 46, 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. That is God speaking. Peace and security. 
this is exactly what the world is screaming and it will only increase to a fever pitch going forward now that Iran and Israel are essentially at war. I think, um, you know, like who, uh, Brother Tom, Watchman River, dear friend of mine, he often says um, since October 7th, he's all, he often been saying that he believes this war leads to the rapture. And I have to say, I agree with him. I believe that we will see the cry for peace and security to continue to increase and reach a fever pitch from this point going forward. And that's what scripture says the world will be saying when it's time for the rapture and the tribulation period. That's what scripture says. So, um, to illustrate this, to drive this point home, I want to show you guys an incredible video. Uh, this video was sent to me by a channel called Rapture Recap. And they, um, the guy who runs Rapture Re Recap, his channel, he has given me permission to play his video here. And I just want to thank you, uh, sir, for making this incredible video because it illustrates how true God's word is and how we see God's word coming to pass before our eyes. So I want to play you guys this video. And uh, understand, hold on a second, it's playing, peace. there we go, one second, it's playing before I wanted it to play. So one thing I wanted to mention before the video starts, this video shows the UN just from October of 2023 to February of 2024 in their videos this vi this video you're about to watch just covers that time span and so you can imagine there's more than what you're about to see but listen to how many times the un is speaking and crying out for peace and security watch this video uh it's amazing so let me pull that video up where is it here um why is this not working one second let me open the video again and there it is. Okay, check this out. It is a reminder of the solemn responsibility we carry to uphold peace and security across the world. Maintaining international peace and security. And peace and security. No, peace and security. In peace and security. In peace and security. In peace and security. Say this again. The United States stands ready to work with all member states that are genuinely committed to advancing peace and security. With Jerusalem as the future capital of two states, living side by side in peace and security. To allow both peoples to live in lasting peace and security. Coexisting in peace and security with Israel. National peace and security. And for global peace and security. It's of international peace and security. To create two states, Palestine and Israel, living side by side in peace and security. Peace and security. Peace and security. Both. Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side in peace and security. Peace and security. But the peace and security that this council is mandated to protect. To restore peace and security in the region. Peace and security in the region. Peace and security. To maintain international peace and security. Peace and security. And peace and security. It's peace and security. Peace and security. Oh, peace and security. Peace and security. Peace and security. Peace and security in the region. In peace and security. Peace and security. The international peace and security and jeopardizes it. Peace and security. The peace and security. Oh, peace and security. Peace and security and to stop that war. Wow. Do you see it said 359 times there? They said peace and security just between October of last year and February of this year. And like I said, 
what have we seen since the October 7th attacks in now, including Iran attacking Israel, the cry for peace and security has done nothing but drastically ramped up, drastically increased. So this is incredible. And I will, by the way, put a link to that video so you guys can go watch it on the Rapture Recap channel. I'll put that video link below later in the description box and in the comments. Um, but I want to show you another thing now. This is from today or yesterday. I think it's from yesterday. And it is Antonio Guterres. This is on the UN's website. And it is from yeah April 14th. And look at this. Okay, this is from yesterday. This is just incredible to watch, guys. Yesterday. And look at what the heading for this page on the UN is. Peace and security news. They literally have a page on the United Nations website dedicated to peace and security news. And the top article shows Antonio Guterres yesterday talking about taking a step back from the brink to avoid full scale Middle East conflict. And I want to show you him speaking at the UN in this video yesterday and listen to what he has to say okay let's let me get this video pulled up and we'll watch it all right here we go let me share the screen so you can see it and here you go it's time to step back from the brink it's vital to avoid any action that could lead to major military confrontations on multiple fronts in the middle east Civilians are already bearing the brunt and paying the highest price. And we have a shared responsibility to actively engage all parties concerned to prevent further escalation. As the Friendly Relations Declaration of 1970 states, acts of reprisal involving the use of force are banned under international law. We have a shared responsibility to secure an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza, the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages and the unimpeded delivery of humanitarian aid. We have a shared responsibility to stop violence in the occupied West Bank, de-escalate the situation along the Blue Line and re-establish safe navigation in the Red Sea. We have a shared responsibility to work for peace, regional, and indeed global peace and security are being undermined by the hour. Neither the region nor the world can afford more war. All right. It's so you notice right there, what does he say? Peace and security. Specifically, the entire address he made there was mainly pointed at Israel. And uh, he's talking about avoiding war and as we go forward here you will see this is exactly what scripture points out the desire to avoid war the specific phrase of peace and security and these things surrounding the nation the tiny nation of israel this is exactly what scripture points out guys unbelievable i want to show you this speaking of trying them wanting to avoid war or pressuring israel to avoid war let me show you this is from the united nations uh instagram well, i don't know if it was yesterday or today but this says just echoing what antonio guterres said there neither the region nor the world can avoid sorry can afford another war so they are seeing this as something that will drag the war, sorry, drag the world into war. That's how they are looking at this. And they are focusing their attention on Israel, on Israel, the land God owns and has given to the Jewish people. 
So I want to read this scripture because this is this is incredible. Again, listen to what they're saying. They're 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 pressuring Israel to avoid war. They're demanding or crying out for peace and security. Let's look at scripture. Look at Isaiah 28, 15. Because this is speaking to Israel, by the way, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge, that's talking about war. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood, we have hid ourselves. You see, Israel is being pressured to avoid war and to divide its land. And they are going to uh, commit their often repeated sin of not trusting in the Lord, but looking to the world for security. And we're going to get more into that here in, a, in a, just a moment. So let's look. What do we see happening right now, right in front of us in the world? I believe we see the chess pieces being moved into position for the final act. Israel is being placed in a precarious position in which they it will seek to do a deal in order to avoid the overflowing scourge of war. And again, like I said, this is their often repeated sin. It's, you know, when you look at whether it's the uh, them crying out for a king like the nations had and crying out for Saul or God bringing them to the promised land and then being fearful of those who were in it. And instead of trusting in God that he had given them the land, they were fearful and they wanted to seek security in other means instead of trusting in God. And so they're going to repeat this sin again, according to scripture. And we see them being placed into a position where exactly this is going to happen. And they seek to save their own necks and to look to the world for security. In Israel, now, just looking at what's going on right now, Israel now has the red heifers. And they are crying out for their third temple. It's possible they could even be sacrificing the red heifers within days or weeks from now. And they've been talking about wanting to do it possibly around the time of Passover this year. Israel is also longing for it and looking for its long awaited Messiah, not realizing that Jesus Christ is their Messiah and they missed him. And in large part, they're longing for and looking for and kind of in this messianic or messiah fever right now, in large part because of these red heifers appearing on the scene and the overwhelming threat of war all around them. You can pull up plenty of articles and videos where the uh, rabbis and the orthodox are saying this is the era of messiah. And that either their Messiah is already here behind closed doors or he's about to appear from, from their own words. This is what they're looking for. This is what they're saying. Let's read Isaiah 28, 18, because this is the position they're being placed in. This is what they're looking for. This is what we see happening in Israel right now. But let's look at what scripture says is going to happen. So, we know they're going to look to the world for security. They're going to do a deal. They're looking for a Messiah because they don't realize Jesus is their Messiah. They're looking for peace and security in the world rather than God. But what does scripture say is going to happen? What does scripture say is actually going to come about because of their decisions and their actions? Isaiah 28, 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. 
So Israel is going to seek to avoid war. They're going to seek security in the world. They're going to look for a Messiah in a man in the world. They're going to, for a time, the Bible says, be deceived by the Antichrist, the false Messiah. And instead of getting peace and security, what does the Bible say? They are not going to get those things. They're, they're going to be trodden down by the overflowing scourge is what it says. And we know that what is coming is not a time of peace. It's a time such as the world has never seen before, nor shall ever see again, the Bible says, known as the tribulation period, the time of God's wrath. Also in Jeremiah 30, 30, verse 7, it's referred to in this way. It says, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jacob is Israel, and that is the time that is coming. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. Israel's trouble is what's coming not peace, not their Messiah during this time. It's a false Messiah, a false peace, war, and tribulation. But what does the Bible say? Eventually, he shall be saved out of it. Israel is not going to be wiped out. Israel is not going to disappear. God says in his word and other scriptures, we don't have time to go through it all, but one third, a remnant will be preserved by the hand of God of the nation of Israel, the Jews, they will be preserved through the tribulation period. And at the end, they will finally look up and they will say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they will call out for Jesus Christ, their savior. And he will appear and rescue them and atone for them and make an end of iniquity for Israel. And we will return with him, the bride of Christ, at that time and jesus will rule and reign from jerusalem and set up his temple and his government will rule and reign on earth for 1000 years at the end of that seven year tribulation period so again what do we see we see the chess pieces i believe lining up for the final act right now exactly as the lord god foretold in his word. And I would like at this time to remind us of the words that the Lord Jesus spoke in Luke 21, 28. He said, and when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. That's the rapture. The Bible refers to it as the day of of redemption. Ephesians 1 13, Ephesians 4 verse 30. That is the day our bodies will be redeemed. That is the day of the rapture when the Lord will call his own up out of this world because his judgment is coming on a world that rejects God and denies the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So looking ahead then, Looking ahead from now, that's what we see now happening. We see the chess pieces moving into position. Um, but looking ahead from now, there are a few things that I would like to point out and just think out loud with you guys on. So uh, warning to anyone watching, uh, there is going to be some speculation. There is going to be some thinking out loud that we're going to talk about here as adults with brains who use reason and logic and can read the word of God and think and encourage one another together. Let's do a little bit of that. So first would be, I would say watch, like I've already said, but watch for the cry for peace and security to grow louder and louder and louder. I think I, like I said, I agree with Brother Tom Watchman River that this war, the state of war in Israel leads to the rapture. It leads to the tribulation period. 
And with that in mind, I'd like to look at something that's <clears throat> coming up this September 23rd, this year of 2024 at the United Nations. And it's their next big summit and they are calling it the Pact for the Future. The Pact for the Future. And let me just pull up their own website here and you guys can look at it with me. And it's very interesting. So let's look at this. This is the United Nations website. And it says the summit for the future in 2024. And I want to read just, uh, we'll start off by reading this little section right here. It says the summit for the future is a once in a generation opportunity to enhance cooperation on critical challenges and address gaps in global governance, reaffirm existing commitments, including to the sustainable development goals, SDGs and the United Nations charter. By the way, in their charter, it's, it says their main goal is to avoid the scourge of war and move towards a reinvig reinvigorated multilateral system that is better positioned to positively impact people's lives, building on the SDG summit in 2023. Member states will consider ways to lay the foundations for more effective global cooperation that can deal with today's challenges as well as new threats in the future. Okay, so let's scroll down here and look at this. This is really interesting. Road to the summit of the future. So this is how they map out their plan since 2015, which is when they initiated Agenda 2030. Up to 2023, we can see the SDG Summit that was last year here, this 2023 uh, SDG Summit. And going forward now, looking ahead in time to this, the pact for the future. And they say it's an action oriented pact for the future will be endorsed by heads of state and government at the summit, showcasing global so solidarity for current and future generations. So this is really interesting. This is something that's coming up on September 23rd of 2024. And um, actually, I want to read this section here too. This is this is pertinent. It says, basis of the summit. The 75th anniversary of the United Nations was marked in June 2020 with the declaration by member states that included 12 overarching commitments along with a request to the Secretary General for recommendations to address both current and future challenges. In September 2021, the Secretary General responded with his report, Our Common Agenda, a wake-up call to speed up the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and propel the commitments contained in the UN 75 Declaration. In some cases, the proposals addressed gaps that emerged since 2015, requiring new governmental agreements. The report therefore called for a summit of the future to forge a new global consensus on readying ourselves for a future that is rife with risks, but also opportunities. The General Assembly welcomed the submission of the rich and substantive report and agreed to hold the summit on September on 22nd through 23rd of September 2024, preceded by a ministerial meeting in 2023. So they're referring to the SDG summit last year as a ministerial meeting, which was being which was preparing the setup for the ultimate goal of the pact for the future in September 23rd of this year, 2024. It says, an action-oriented pact for the future is expected to be agreed by member states through intergovernmental negotiations on issues they decide to take forward. So this is something I think is worth looking at. This is th something I think that is worth considering. Um, I have a personal opinion that I want to share here. So <clears throat> this agenda, and, and by that I mean Agenda 2030, this agenda is their all-encompassing plan to control and rule the world. This is the plan. And there is not another plan on the table. 
This is their plan. And I personally believe, I, sorry, I personally do not believe that anyone is going to step up and propose a, bl a brand new plan and just say, no, scrap all of this that you've been working on since 2015. We're going to go with something entirely different. I personally don't think that's going to happen. However, I do think someone will step up and confirm or make greater this plan. This is my personal opinion. This is my personal perspective. And you are free to agree or disagree. But I do not see another plan on the table that is all encompassing to rule and control the world. This is it, Agenda 2030. This is their plan. And by the way, if you're wondering, is Israel on board with this plan? Is Israel involved in this plan, Agenda 2030? Yes, they absolutely are uh, involved with Agenda 2030. In fact, they've been involved since the very beginning. Uh, I can show you this right here. This is from the Jerusalem Post. This was posted October 11th, 2015. It says, Israel commits to new UN Sustainable Development Agenda. At the top of the list is to eradicate poverty in all its forms everywhere, end hunger, promote gender equality, and combat climate change by 2030. So Israel is absolutely involved in Agenda 2030, and they have been since the very beginning, and they continue to be. So Israel is part of this agenda. Um, let me show you some, some more things about this. They have actually released what they call their zero draft of the Pact for the Future. So it's basically their very first draft of the actual agreement that all these heads of state are going to come and agree upon. And they again, they call it the Pact for the Future. And I want to just pull this up and show you guys the actual zero draft. So let me pull that one up. And again, this is from the UN's website. So here it is, Pact for the Future Zero Draft, right here at the top, uh, 26th of January, 2024. So one thing I want to mention before we dive deeper in this is I can do a, a word search here for peace and security. And the phrase peace and security occurs in this document over, it's, uh, let's see, 25 times. 25 times the phrase peace and security is contained within this document. And if you go down here to section seven here, it says, to achieve this, we reaffirm our commitment to the charter of the United Nations. Again, remember that charter, I'll, I'll show you this later, but that charter's main goal is to avoid the scourge of war. We reaffirm our commitment to the charter of the United Nations and international law. We also reaffirm that the three pillars of the United Nations, development, peace and security, and human rights are interlinked and mutually reinforcing. We further reaffirm that eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions, including extreme poverty, is the greatest global challenge and an indispensable requirement for sustainable development. And then we can go down here. They actually have a section which they title International Peace and Security. And what is the first thing it says under that section? The scourge of war. This is, this is language that is biblical. If you're familiar with the book of Daniel, if you're familiar with the book of 1 Thessalonians, if you're familiar with Isaiah, this is biblical language. Let me see if I can make that bigger for you guys here. Let me a little bit bigger. There we go. Now you can see it better. Look at this. International peace and security says the scourge of war is taking on a new and more dangerous forms. We are closer today to a nuclear confrontation than at any time since the end of the Cold War. We will act collectively to maintain and restore international, what? Peace and security on land, at sea, in space, in cyberspace, and in other emerging domains to more effectively address unrelated global, uh, sorry, interrelated global threats and to deliver on the promises of the Charter of the United Nations. Again, we'll look at that here in just a second. 
including its purposes and principles. And so, I mean, it goes on and on and on. You can look, peace and security is all over this document. There's this here on this page, they have a big section, international peace and security. Again, just peace and security, peace and security, peace and security, peace and security. It's all over this document. Another thing uh, that's interesting is the word reaffirm is in this document 39 times. So here's, I want to show you guys a slide. I, I, this is an old slide that I made, but I want to bring it up again because um, I think it's, I think it's relevant when you're just looking at these documents. And like I said, if you're familiar with certain scriptures, these words should pop out to you. Let me show you guys this slide that I made a while ago. So look at this. This says <clears throat> first Thessalonians five, three in the left here, we said the world will be, the world will be saying peace and security. It says while people are saying, and I, I'm, marked out there is because this is the uh, English standard version on this uh, verse. And I used it because it says peace and security, which uh, more accurately lines up with what is being said, but it's not, there is peace and security. The more accurate translation is just while they are saying peace and security. In fact, the King James version says when they shall say peace and security. So there is, is not the most accurate uh, form there or translation there. So then we also see Israel will be seeking to avoid war. And again, we read that in Isaiah uh, 28, 15, the overflowing scourge shall pass through it, shall not come unto us. So then you look on the right here, and this is the UN website. And there's the link in blue above. Uh, but the title is Peace and Security. And the very first thing it says is to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war are among the first, the very first words of the UN Charter in its preamble. And those words were the main motivation for creating the United Nations. So again, this is biblical language. And it's incredible to see that just as scripture said, they're crying out for the exact phrase, peace and security. They're seeking to avoid the scourge of war, exactly like it says in scripture. And we're seeing this over and over and over in the UN's documents. And so I think it's worth paying attention to. I think it's worth looking at and keeping an eye on. Um, and I want to show you, let's see. I want to show you, actually... Do this. Let me show you that slide again, or that's, I won't show it to you again, but the slide I just showed you on the right where it said peace and security, that's a UN website. And I want you to go and do this experiment on your own. Okay. Go to Google, the Google search page and type in peace and security and Google it. And the very top result will be that page that I showed, showed you where it says, at, on the UN, peace and security. And we seek to avoid the scourge of war right underneath it. That is the top result if you Google peace and security. And the rest of it is World Economic Forum, United Nations. United Nations is all of the search results. That is really, I think, beyond coincidence. That if you look up this phrase that the Bible says people will be, will be saying, it's the UN is all over it. And in those pages and in those documents, it includes not only peace and security, but avoiding the scourge of war and strengthening and reaffirming commitments over and over and over again. So let me show you um, another page that comes up in the search results. I thought this was interesting. When you Google peace and security, uh, this is one of the pages that also pops up. It's one of the top results, and I want you to look at it. It is globalgovernanceforum.org. And look at this. It says, eliminating the anachronism of war would free up enormous resources for more constructive uses. Peace and security since the establishment 
of the League of Nations in 1920, the goal of global governance has been to ensure peace among nations. However, the international system currently lacks the resources and the will to effectively fulfill this mandate. A comprehensive solution, including staged disarmament, an international peace force with legal authority to act on behalf of the international community would empower the UN to provide reliable global peace and security. This is one of the top pages that pops up and it's talking about the UN being used to enforce that exact phrase that the Bible calls out, peace and security. So this is something I think we need to keep an eye on. This is something I think we do well to be aware of. Um, let me show you, let's see. Let me show you this. This is called the Common Agenda uh, Pact for the Future document. This is from the UN as well. This is one of their main documents that lists out what's the purpose behind this Pact for the Future Summit that's to come. And let me share it with you. I got this straight from the UN website. And look at this. It's, it says, the summit of the future, what would it deliver? How would a pact for the future that adopts the proposals of the Secretary General change our world? And look at this. I want you to notice something. The very first word in the document is, under purpose, is strengthen. Strengthen. That is the word from... Daniel 9 27 that we read as confirm or make greater gabar in Hebrew strengthen to confirm to strengthen to make greater to gabar so I find it interesting that the very first word on this document for the purpose of the pact for the future is strengthen and it says strengthen international cooperation so it delivers fully and fairly on existing agreements while enabling us to respond effectively to new threats and opportunities for present and future generations. In so doing, restore trust in multilateralism, multilateralism and each other. And if you go down here in the document, here you see the phrase peace and security right here. So another interesting document, and you guys can go and do your own research and look more over these things. But I, I want to read really quick here from uh, this verse, Daniel 9, 27. And it's speaking of the Antichrist and I believe the nations and what's going to happen. And it says, Daniel 9, 27, it says, and he, speaking of the Antichrist, shall confirm, that word is gabar in Hebrew, strengthen, confirm, make greater. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So I find this really interesting. Again, the, the wording, the language, the particular words being used. And I want to think about something here. Again, we're thinking out loud. There is speculation involved here. There's personal opinions involved here. Um, but let's think about this. What did we see last year at the UN SDG Summit 2023? Because you guys know I, I did several videos about it. I was considering it. I was looking at it. I was saying we should be aware of it. Um, I was wondering if it might itself turn out to be that confirmation of the covenant or if it would have something to do with it. I was very much say, saying we need to look at this, but I was clear that I didn't know if it would be the actual confirmation of the covenant or not, only that we should look at it and consider it. But here's some, I just wanna look at this again. What did we see uh, last year? Let me show you this again, because you guys will remember this, but I just wanna bring it up for our memories. This is what we saw. The UN said we need seven years of accelerated transformative action to achieve the SDGs. And so we saw many nations getting together and agreeing and confirming their commitment to these many covenants that the UN has used to bind these nations together. And they were agreeing to their commitment for a period of seven years for the Agenda 2030 goal. And that's 
That's just what we saw, okay? We saw that happen last year. So here's the point where I want to think out loud with you guys, um, like we already have been doing here, but I want to think out loud with you more. Is it possible, and I'm just going to ask the question, is it possible that this seven-year covenant between many nations of the world, including Israel, by the way, will be confirmed or made greater soon. So we saw the nations of the world get together last year saying we need to do this. And they were talking about, we got seven years left. Is it possible we will see what they were talking about last year confirmed and made greater soon? I don't know. You guys, let me know what you think. Um, is it possible that this upcoming pact for the future could be the forum or the, the place for the confirming and making greater of this covenant with many? Again, I don't know. All we can do is wait and see, but it's very interesting. So, uh, and here's a point I wanted to mention. Um, some people are of the perspective or, or of the opinion that in Daniel 9, 27, when it says many, he will confirm a covenant with many, that the word many means only Israel. It is only referring to Israel and Israel alone. And however, I, I would say that I, I don't hold that perspective. I personally, I think the word many there in Daniel 9, 27 means the many nations of the world, including Israel. And I think that the many nations of the world and Israel will be involved in this covenant that will be confirmed and made greater. And, ag and again, when, when I look at the world, when I look what, at what's right in front of my eyeballs, um, there is an agenda to rule the world and create a new world order. This agenda 2030 is their all encompassing plan to rule and control the world. It covers every sector of human life, economy, society, government, water, resources, everything you can think of, it covers. There is not another plan on the table. And I personally don't believe anyone is going to step up and propose a, a brand new plan. Uh, however, again, I do think that someone could step up and confirm or make greater this plan. That's my personal perspective. So am I saying that the Daniel 9, 27 uh, confirmation of the covenant with many is going to happen this September 23rd at the UN? No. I'm not saying that it for sure is going to happen, but I am keeping my eye on it. I am keeping my eye on it. Do I think it's a possibility that it could be? Yes, I do think it's a possibility. Just like I think it's a possibility that it might not be and that the view that um, it, it's, it's something that's just going to mainly only focus on Israel and maybe play out more like what people traditionally thought would happen. I think that's a possibility as well. I'm not saying that perspective is completely wrong at all, but I do think this is a possibility and I do think it's something we should keep our eyes on. And it is completely plastered with the exact biblical language that the Bible calls out. Peace and security, avoiding the scourge of war, Israel being involved, many nations coming together, many coming together to join a covenant. I think this is all over the, the UN and what they're putting together. Um, let me see here. So along those lines, is it possible that the rapture could occur this year and the tribulation could commence this fall? Yes, it's, of course, it's absolutely possible. Am I saying that it for sure will happen this year? No, guys, I have no idea. 
if it's for sure going to happen uh, this year or not. Um, here's here's what I do know. Okay, I do know these things. Um, God is in complete control, and He will send Jesus to call the church out of this world in the rapture at exactly His right and perfect time. I know that. Uh, I know the tribulation period, judgment, will surely come upon this world, and it is not far away. And I know that we have one hope and one truth that we can place our faith in completely and unreservedly, and that is Jesus Christ. We can trust him that he will fulfill his word and he will do it in his perfect timing and in his perfect way. And men are fallible, but God is not. He is perfect. He is coming. These things will happen according to his will and in his time. We know that. So let's just review a little bit. We have Israel in turmoil, Iran attacking, missiles flying everywhere. We have Israel in turmoil turmoil. We have the world crying out, saying exactly this phrase, peace and security. The exact phrase that scripture says they will be calling out at the time of the rapture and the tribulation. We have Israel seeking their third temple and they have their red heifers. We have digital economy you know, quantum computing, we have blockchain technology, we have cryptocurrency, we have digital identity, we have a new world order. All of these things are at our doorstep. And the agenda has been alive and well and progressing quickly since 2015. And we are now in 2024. And again, we have one solid rock in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So now is the time above anything else to place your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ. Fear not. Don't be afraid of these things that are coming upon the world. Fear not. Hold fast and keep your eyes on Jesus. It is time to place your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the life. It says in John 3, 16 through 18, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, living a sinless life, came and died on the cross, shed his blood as payment for our sins, rose again on the third day, and he's coming back, and he's coming back soon. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And listen, salvation is a free gift of God by faith, by grace through faith, scripture says. You can't earn it. It is a free gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And it is this simple. It's not being perfect. It's not wearing the right things, saying the right things, sitting in the right building. It's placing your faith in Jesus Christ, and repentance and belief are two sides of the same coin. The moment 
you look and see your need for a Savior and you cry out to Jesus Christ and place your faith in him, you are in that moment repenting. Re the word repentance means changing your mind. You are changing your mind. You are repenting from saying, I don't believe, I don't need Jesus, to I believe, I need a Savior. Repentance happens at the moment of true faith and belief. And it is simple. God made it simple. It says in Romans 10, 9 through 10, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So listen, guys. Things are happening right now in the world exactly as the Bible said they would. We are in the end of the end times. The world is crying out for peace and security. This is exactly what Scripture says the world will be saying at the time that the tribulation period comes upon the world completely unexpectedly and they won't escape. But, Scripture says, we, the church, will be taken out. We will escape because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We will be taken to the Father's house while this time of tribulation happens on the earth. You do not want to be here for what's coming. You do not want to gamble your eternity for a single second or a single minute or a single day. Look to Jesus. Place your faith in him. And guys, listen. Fear not. Hold fast and keep your eyes on Jesus. Again, remember what Jesus said in Luke 21, 28. When these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. We are there. It's time to look up. It's time to share the gospel. It's time to tell people the good news. Get the gospel to the lost. Plant seeds. It's okay if they don't listen to you. It's okay if they reject you. Plant seeds because you don't know if it will yet produce a harvest later. Even after the rapture, the Bible says countless numbers of people will, after the rapture, during the tribulation, come to faith in God. And they will reject the mark of the beast and his system because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And they also will receive eternal life and be raised from the dead at the end of the tribulation. We can plant seeds now for the gospel. And though you may not see a harvest now, you do not know what could come later because of those seeds that you plant. So pray and share the gospel now more than ever because the hour is late. Time is short and it's running out and it's running out quickly. So guys, God bless you. I love you. And until I see you next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And good night.